Hey everyone, this is Nick, and while I truly believe that the Linux desktop can work 100% for most people, it doesn't mean I can't admit it has some rough edges. And I'm not talking about sweeping big issues with Linux as a desktop operating system. I'm talking day-to-day -day stuff here. So here are a bunch of pain points that affect me and a lot of people that I moved to Linux. Of course, these are personal and you might have others. So let me know down there in the comments the stuff that annoys you. Annoys you like this segue to today's sponsor. Damn it, I need to watch more LTT to fix these segues. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode is my favorite solution to run a Linux or gaming server. It's what I use to run my own Nextcloud instance and my own only office server. The interface is super easy to use. They are affordable, they have tons of documentation online, and they have one-click deployable servers for a ton of applications or games. For example, Focal Board. If you don't know about it, it's an open source alternative to tools like Trello, Asana, or Notion. It lets you create milestones, keep track of your nodes, have a bird's eye view of your projects, and it basically helps you get stuff done. And you can deploy your Focal Board server in one click from your Linode dashboard, something I should probably do to ensure that I keep delivering my videos on time. And to get you started, Linode is giving you $100 of free credit to get your own Linux server or gaming server running. To get access to that, just click the link in the description below. Now, the first one, and I think a lot of people will feel my pain, is how to handle PDFs on Linux. To read PDF documents, it's extremely easy. Every desktop environment has a nice PDF reader that's quite fast, it works perfectly. You can zoom in, zoom out, to handle multiple pages, everything you might need to read. But as soon as you need to interact with a PDF, things start sucking big time. To fill in PDF fields, for starters, you can always use your web browser and its PDF viewer, but it's not amazing. The native tools just are terrible at it. Here, for example, is the GNOME PDF viewer trying to edit a document that I already filled in. What I entered doesn't show in the fields unless I click on the field. On KDE, Ocular at least has a button that lets me enable or disable these forms. And at least it shows what I entered. Although why it's not the default, it's beyond me. If I took the time to enter data into a PDF document and saved it, Chances are, the next time I open that document, I want that data to be shown immediately. But maybe that has been developed by somebody who really loves magical invisible ink that you have to heat up or something. Who knows? And that's just the basics. Now, if I want to sign a PDF document on GNOME, I simply can't. There is no option to do it in any way. In Ocular, on KDE, I can digitally sign a document, but that opens an error message saying I need to configure a digital signature, which takes me to the online manual, which says I need digital signing certificates or whatever, without any simple way to add one myself straight from the application or create one on the fly from another KDE app. Hey, you know what would actually work better? Being able to just grab a photo of your actual signature and pasting it on the document or drawing it with your touchpad or your mouse. Yeah, that works for most people most of the time who wants to sign PDFs. You don't need digital certificates. But GNOME doesn't let you do that. And Ocular doesn't either. If you try to drag an image of your signature, it will just open in a new document. There is no menu entry to add an image and overlay it on top of the PDF. So by default, you literally cannot sign a PDF document. What you can do is open the PDF document with LibreOffice Draw, which will open it in an editable stance, let you fill in the form fields, and add your signature image by simple drag and drop. But it also completely breaks the layout of the document in a lot of cases, and editing the actual PDF is a nightmare, as each line of text is its own object that you'll as often move around as manage to edit. It's a pure freaking nightmare, and the night isn't over yet. If you want to reorder pages inside of a PDF, or remove one and add another one, you need a third-party tool. I personally use PDF Arranger on GNOME, because the default PDF readers do not let you move pages around, or delete them, or just add another PDF document inside of one you're currently viewing. And if you're thinking, wow, this guy has completely unrealistic expectations about PDFs, 
macOS does that out of the box and has done it for 10 years. You can add signatures manually, you can just drop them onto the document, you can fill the forms and they stay filled when you reopen the document. You can move pages around, you can delete them, you can add new ones by just simple drag and drop. It works and that's what we need. Oh, and it's free, free of charge. Like having a third party tool that you need to pay to do these things, ridiculous. Next thing I don't like on Linux is email and calendar handling. Simply put, we don't have good desktop applications for managing these things on Linux. Thunderbird is the closest we have, but the interface is insanely confusing and it looks like something that's 20 years old. Now sure, they're working on a big redesign and I have high hopes about it, but for now, I can't use that thing. It's way too clunky. It opens tabs for everything. Adding an account is insanely convoluted. It doesn't fit well with GNOME or KDE in terms of look and feel or behavior. It's just weird to use and I never could get used to it. I want to use it, but until it's gotten that complete UX redesign, I just can't. It adds too much friction to do anything. It's not a matter of looks. It's just illegible as an application. The default suite for GNOME is also pretty underwhelming. You have Gnome Calendar and Geary and Gnome Contacts. And the calendar option is decent enough, very simple for personal calendars, and definitely not something you can use professionally if you need stuff like seeing who is available at which time or handling of time zones, for example. The Contacts app is ridiculously simple without any way to add any form of account that wouldn't be supported by the Gnome online accounts. So no Cards Dav or iCloud Contacts, for example. Its integration with the default apps is also mediocre as, for example, you can't automatically create a new contact when you answer to an email address, for example, something that should at least be an option. And the email app, Geary, while it's decent, is also very, very simple. It can't create folders to triage your inbox or labels for Gmail. It can't unify your inboxes in a single view. And more importantly, it doesn't seem to access all IMAP folders. For example, my archive folder, which is a huge dump of everything I want to save for later, isn't accessible through Geary. It can only access the mails I dropped in that folder from this exact device, which is obviously not what you want. Unless maybe it is and you archive your emails by device, in which case, why? And you're a monster and stop it. Then there's the KDE suite of email, contacts and calendars, but this thing, while it's insanely powerful and customizable, doesn't look like it has been touched in decades. Even just adding an email account that is able to send and receive messages is insanely complicated. You have to manually look into the settings for that account and map the folders yourself to IMAP folders or everything will be stored locally and you won't be able to send anything at all. It sorely lacks auto configuration tools and sane defaults on all the apps of the suite, although their integration in a single shell is actually pretty good if you're looking for an Outlook alternative. Once it's configured, it's awesome, but a lot of people would just have fled super far away way before this configuration can happen. Hey, in a way, these apps are the perfect symbolic representation of their desktops. GNOME apps are way too simple in the name of ease of use and lack critical, crucial features. And KDE apps are way too complex in the name of having all the features. Which means that your last resort is basically evolution. And honestly, it's great, but it also looks pretty outdated, like a GNOME 2 app that barely has received the tiniest of touches to make it feel more modern. It does everything, it's really cool, but man, when you use it on KDE, it looks atrocious. And when you use it on a recent GNOME desktop, it doesn't feel like the rest of your applications either. So yeah, major pain point here. I just cannot find a good, legible, powerful enough, but not insanely complex suite of applications for email, calendar, and contacts. And all the people I installed Linux for told me the exact same thing, to the point that they're all using webmails. And that tells you something about the quality of your email and calendar apps when people prefer using a webmail to a desktop app. Now, next pain point is display related stuff. We are so late on that stuff. Display scaling, we have, but fractional scaling, it's a damn mess. It's going to have huge performance impacts. 
It doesn't work well on hybrid devices with NVIDIA graphics, where you will get screen tearing. It doesn't apply to all apps like Steam, DaVinci Resolve, Only Office, and a lot more, which will either go 2x or 1x, but nothing in between. And it's just messy and 10 years behind even Windows, which also sucks at this, by the way. HDR isn't a thing at all on Linux, and I don't even know how you could go about turning it on and watching HDR content or playing games with HDR enabled. And font rendering kinda sucks as well, although it's easy enough to not make it suck that much, at least on GNOME and KDE. GNOME tweaks, fonts, enable subpixel anti-aliasing and full hinting. On KDE, the same settings are in the system settings in the fonts panel. Your eyes will thank me after a reboot, unless your panel is already high DPI and using scaling of any type, in which case you absolutely do not need to enable these things. Now seriously, why isn't the anti-aliasing technology used to smooth fonts on an LCD screen turned on by default, when every screen is an LCD these days? Okay, you've got some OLED, but come on, it's mostly LCDs. Or at least let people change it easily instead of hiding it in an additional third-party app on GNOME. Now, KDE does have settings for that, but again, the defaults aren't really set for most people to have a pleasant experience. With Wayland, some of those things are going away, slowly. But in the meantime, we're way behind and it's turning stuff that should be an advantage, like a high DPI display on the laptop, into a drawback that will prevent you from buying that thing because it's gonna suck and you know it. Another pain point for me personally is automation. Like graphically creating a suite of events that happens when a condition is met. For example, when a file is dropped in the downloads folder and it's an image, maybe I want it compressed as a JPEG to save some space and then moved to another folder if it's a screen cap from Firefox, which has a specific name pattern. Or maybe I want to be able to launch a quick one-click shortcut that automatically adds rounded corners to certain images or deletes all old invoices I have in my download folder since I know I've already sent them out. Stuff like that is crucial to gain some time on repetitive tasks or even on video editing. And I can't do it right now on Linux, at least not graphically. And sure, I could spend some time and create bash scripts to do this exact same thing. But I don't want to, I want to do it graphically, because if we're able to have complete giant settings for everything on KDE, we should be able to have an automation, a graphical automation app, like shortcuts on iOS or on macOS. Now something that doesn't affect me at all, but seems to be a big pain point for parents I moved to Linux, is the lack of good parental control software. We have some basic things like blocking certain applications or web browsers or even preventing application installs and limiting these by age range so kids can't install stuff that isn't allowed. But first, these age limits are often not set by the applications you can install, especially when using old repos and not flatpak. And second, you can't interact with screen time at all, limiting a computer session to a certain number of minutes or hours or certain days in the week at least not out of the box. There seem to be third-party solutions, but default ones will always be better integrated. And also all these third-party ones look like they're 20 years old at least. So I would be a bit concerned about their abilities and how well they're maintained. Parental control apps need to be in that weird limbo where they need to feel like they're older than the kid you're trying to control, but they also need to not feel like they're 20 or 30 years old because you want them to be able to handle and catch the new stuff that your kid might be exposed to? Not that I would care at all about that since I do not have kids and I do not plan to have any anytime soon, but still, apparently it's a big problem. Okay, so these are the pain points I encounter myself on a regular basis or that I've been told about by people close to me. PDF handling is for me at least the worst offender. It's the one that almost makes me want to use another OS just for doing that. And every time I have to handle a PDF, I put the task off by days because I know it's going to be a mess. HDR and fractional scaling are mostly issues when looking at new hardware, where you know that you won't be able to take advantage of all the capabilities, or where a high-res screen is actually a problem for you and not a feature, which sucks. And parental controls, well, I don't care at all about it, but maybe you do. So if you have other pain points, if you agree or disagree with mine, let me know down there in the comments and maybe we can help each other finding solutions to fix those problems.
And in the meantime, I can help you find a solution to your my computer doesn't run Linux well problem, thanks to today's sponsor. If you're looking for a new computer that you want to run Linux on, don't go buying any old Windows computer. Buy a laptop or a desktop that actually supports Linux out of the box from Tuxedo, for example. They are based in Germany, but they ship worldwide and they have a huge range of devices that run Linux natively. The hardware has been specifically picked to run well with Linux. And they have that big, big range of devices from small ultrabooks, Nux, big towers, gaming laptops, workstations, gaming PCs, and they're all configurable, easy to open and repairable and upgradable. You can change the SSD, the RAM, you can configure another CPU, uh, another SSD, you can add Blu-ray optical drives, you can have your own custom keyboard layout, laser etched on your laptop or your own logo, laser etched on the lid. It's really, really great. So if you need a new device, don't buy a Windows computer, buy one from Tuxedo that actually supports Linux. So, thanks for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't, well, there's a dislike button, and you can also tell me why in the comments down there. And if you want to support the channel, there's a super thanks button underneath this YouTube video, there's a PayPal link in the description, and there are also links to my Patreon page and YouTube memberships. Both get you access to a weekly podcast where I talk about the channel, Linux, open source technology, and everything in between. And you also get the right to vote on the next topic that I'll cover for the next month. So thanks everyone for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!